Dear Life is a 2012 collection of short stories by the Canadian author Alice Munro. Munro was born in Ontario in 1931, where she also grew up. She published her first short story when she was just 19. Her first collection, Dance of the Happy Shades, appeared in 1968 and won the Governor General's Award, Canada's top literary prize. She went on to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2013. She's often said to have revolutionised the short story itself. In 2006, Margaret Atwood, a fellow Canadian author, described her as being among the major writers of English fiction of our time. She's one of those writers about whom it's often said, no matter how well known she becomes, that she ought to be better known. What makes her so special? This is partly a personal response, and I'll concentrate here on dear life, although much of what I say could apply equally well elsewhere. One way of categorising short story writers is into those who present a slice of life, say Anton Chekhov and Raymond Carver, and those who present a more conventional beginning, middle, end narrative, say Arthur Conan Doyle and M.R. James. Monroe probably best fits the former category, but very often we don't get a slice of life, rather we get a really big chunk of it. There are ten stories in Dear Life, plus four autobiographical vignettes, the first and last are the closest things I have to say about my own life, as Monroe describes them. The ten stories are all told in a calm, rational voice, without literary pyrotechnics. Most of the characters are humdrum by conventional standards, yet by giving their lives a forensic, systematic presentation, Munro shows how interesting they really are, and how odd. It's that oddness that will probably stay with the reader. In some ways, it's the culminative effect of the 14 pieces in here. The autobiographical pieces are totally consistent with the stories, but it's also the fact that seen across a long enough time period, from a detached perspective, probably nearly all lives are odd. That's perhaps one of the reasons why Munro is often said to exemplify the so-called Southern Ontario Gothic genre, in which a relatively bleak landscape is tied to a kind of austere pessimism about this life, Protestantism. Margaret Atwood says of that landscape, it was named Sowesto by the painter Greg Kernow. It's an area of considerable interest, but also of considerable psychic murkiness and oddity. In my view, probably the best story in Dear Life is the eighth, entitled Simply Train. It's about a man who arrives out of the blue in a place, who seems to put down roots, before unexpectedly moving on, sometimes decades later. Is he a drifter? How reliable is he, really? What's his moral value? There are debits, but also credits. Monroe subtly persuades us that there can't ever be a final reckoning. People, including this one, are just what they are. I think when most people are young, before the age of about 30, say, they have a tendency to view their much older family members as relics, often moulded by a series of minor wrong turns or missed opportunities, period pieces in a way that they can never be. They, the young, are forward-looking, uncomplicated, and thankfully fated never to end up like that. But of course, everyone does end up like that. Among our many other virtues, Alice Monroe is very good on roughly why.